Let's talk about Ludo's Africa, a set of ancient African games that's also going to support charity. Welcome to Brains on Games. I'm Dr. Brian McDonald. In this episode, we're going to talk about a game, well, actually not just one game, about four games that are coming to Kickstarter today as this video is being posted. It's a set of games from different countries around Africa. These are ancient games that uh, Lemery Games is trying to preserve as part of this campaign. So here's the kit that was sent to me by Lemery Games not too long ago. This is a set of games called Ludo's Africa by Lemery Games. Like I said, there's four games in here and there's variant rules for each one. So really you're getting more than four games if, if you collect all four of these things. But this is a, a set of uh, several games. They're all two-player games. They all work for kids age six and up. And these games only take about 15 to 20 minutes to play. Let's take a deeper look at Ludo's Africa from Lemery Games. Each of the games comes in a small box that slides into the larger one. Inside that box, you're going to get the uh, little rules pamphlet that also includes a history of the game. Uh, and each of the game, each of the games also has a bag to carry it in. You don't have to carry it in that box. This is all about being able to bring these games anywhere, being able to play them anywhere. So it's pretty easy to just toss this into your bag and bring it with you on a trip. The boards themselves are cloth. These are double-sided cloth boards and some of the variant rules will have a, a, a different board on the opposite side. So these just roll up and fit into those bags and all of the pieces are made of wood. Often there's some screen printing on there. So you've got that neat little package. As I said, they come in a box or a bag. There is in the campaign going to be a, a pay what you want option where you can grab one of these games without a box, just in the bag with the pieces that I showed you. Um, and, and I mean, this is a charitable, a charitable project too, because it is all about making sure that these games are accessible for kids to play in future generations. And so they've created these colorful, easy to transport um, versions of the game with wooden and cloth pieces. Um, they're going to donate games to schools and charitable organizations after the campaign is done. And that big box that I showed you at the beginning, if you buy all four, uh, they're going to come inside that big box on the Kickstarter campaign. The first game I've pulled out here is Dara. This one's from Nigeria, and this is a game where you're going to be placing lion tokens or elephant tokens, depending on which player you are, on this board. Once all of the tokens are placed, you can move one, and you're trying to create lines of three. If you manage to get a line of three, you get to take one of your opponent's pieces off the board, and you can take any piece you want as long as it's not one that's already in a row of three. So Dara is a game where uh, really it is the placement at the beginning that's the important part. Each player is placing these things one at a time. You've got to get those pieces in the right place to make it easier for you to make those groups of three than it is for the opponent. The second game that we'll talk about is Yote. And I hope, <laughs> I hope I'm saying the names of these games correctly, but this is Yote. This is one that comes from Mali. And this is about placing camels on the board. It's a little bit like checkers, I would say, except that the board starts empty and you have a choice of placing a camel in any space on the board, moving a camel one space horizontally or vertically, or jumping over the other player's camels in order to capture them and take them off the board. The other neat thing about this game that kind of makes it a bit more complicated or difficult than checkers is that if I capture an opponent's camel, I not only get to take that one off the board, but I can choose another of their camels and take that off the board as well. So you're getting two each time you capture one. Fanarona is a game that comes out of Madagascar, and appropriately enough, just like the movie Madagascar, we've got lemurs here on the pieces, and these are, are uh, this is a network of branches. What you're doing in this game is that you're moving on to an opponent's piece to capture it and then all of the opponent's pieces behind that one are going to be removed from the board. You're trying to chain moves together so that you're capturing multiple lines of pieces on your turn. So you can move into a space that's occupied by your opponent 
and knock off the lines behind them. You can also move away. It's called a lure move. You can move away. If I had an empty space here, I could move away from that one and it eliminate those two pieces from the board. So you're just trying to put yourself in a position where you can chain multiple moves together and remove as many of your opponent's pieces as possible. One of the things I really like about Fanarona is that after you play a game, traditionally the idea is then you play some, they call them Vela rounds, I think they're called, Vela or Vela rounds. And what you're doing in that round is the loser, this is to, to help the loser to catch up and to allow the loser to practice their skills and get better at the game to be a better opponent for you. So once you've played a game, the loser then takes the green pieces. You're going to play a Vela match where the green piece, the green player has to capture one piece every turn. The orange player cannot capture, they can only move until they've got five pieces left and then the game proceeds as a normal game of Fanarona. So that's a, a chance to practice those moves and give the green player an opportunity to uh, work on their strategies without worrying about their pieces being taken off the board. The last game in the kit is Owari. This is a game from Ghana and if you're familiar with Mancala, this board should look very familiar to you for sure because you've got these seeds that are placed in pits. So this is kind of a variant on Mancala. What you're doing in this game, just like Mancala, you're taking all of the seeds from a pit on your side and you're placing them one at a time in the adjacent pits and going around until you have none left. The trick here is that you're trying to end your turn in a pit on your opponent's side that has two or three seeds in it once you've placed yours in there. If you do that, you're going to get those two or three seeds. You're also going to get the seeds from each adjacent pit on the opponent's side that also has two or three. That's how you're capturing them. So you're trying to set things up to create groups of two or three and prevent your opponent from being able to do the same on your side. All of these games, of course, they're very different games. They're similar in that they're all two-player games, but they're all exercising. You know, if we want to talk about what skills are you practicing when you play these games, these are all visual spatial games. They're all about some sort of a spatial puzzle that's being created, and the players have to find a way to capture the pieces uh, in order to win the game. Final thoughts about Ludos Africa. Well, this is, look, first of all, I think it's a charitable project and it's all about preserving games from the past. I've been reading books about the history of games uh, and their links to development and society. Uh, and so I really think that it, this is a great project, particularly when you add in the fact that you've got the charitable donations at the end and there's even an option to pay what you want to grab one of these things. Um, they're gorgeous. Uh, the, I love the colors. The boards are cloth and they are, um, I mean, you can't, you can't really tell when you're just looking at them on a video, but they're stitched on the outside and they're really nice soft boards. The wooden pieces are, I, I think you're at the greatest risk maybe of losing the little seeds here uh, from Owari, but um, the wooden pieces are fantastic. The colors are bright and they're super small, light, easy to transport and easy to play anywhere. You know, if I would have had a kit like this when my kids were younger, I, I would have been popping it in the, the glove compartment of the car to bring it to restaurants or to play in between, you know, while we're waiting for the big brother to finish his soccer practice, whatever it might be. So, I, I mean, I just think that this is a great idea. O Owari was my favorite of all of them. I do like Mancala. I think that's a neat game. It's simple and just kind of a fun little puzzle to play. It doesn't take very long. This one was my favorite. My, my second favorite, I think, was Fanarona, where you're really trying to chain those moves together. If your kids like checkers, I mean, that's the Yote is a game where, you know, it's like checkers, but it adds that complexity of you're placing a piece or moving, so you don't start with all your pieces on the board, and you also get to remove a second piece if you capture one. So it's quite a bit more advanced maybe than checkers, but it's similar in that you're moving pieces and jumping over your opponent's piece to capture it. Um, if there are downsides, though, 
Um, there, I mean, there are a couple of things. One is that these are ancient games. I, I, the positive is that they're being preserved. Maybe the downside is that they don't have those sort of modern kinds of uh, concepts or mechanisms like um, giving the second player a bonus to compensate for they don't get to go first or um, you know some catch-up mechanism if a player is losing. I think Dara was the one that it, it was my least favorite. I think it was the it was the the um, it wasn't the hit of the four games because you've got that ability with Dara where you, where you're trying to you're moving your elephants or lines around to create those those rows of three and you can create a row of three, move one piece out of it, and then move it back on the next turn to capture another piece. So, so Dara is the game where you are playing that capturing part at the end, but really the game is in placing the pieces in a way that's going to allow you to create those rows and interfere with your opponent's ability to mess with those rows once you've created them. So Dara, I think, was the most... Um, complicated in terms of uh, being able to uh, come back once one player had started to create a couple of rows. Uh, and unless you know ahead of time about the importance of the placement, it is kind of, there's no way to catch up. I, I don't think once you get started, you have to find a way to maybe block the player from moving that piece just back and forth and back and forth each turn. So that, that's the one downside, I guess I would say. Is that made uh, maybe Dara less preferred in our group, but we love these games and they're just so gorgeous. So, I mean, thanks so much to the folks at Lemery Games and thanks to Lemery Games for not just preserving these ancient games, but for the charitable work that they do uh, as a game company. I think that's amazing. So, thanks so much again. I will include information about the Kickstarter campaign in the show notes below this video. If you have any questions or comments, you can of course leave them in the comments section below or you can email me at brian at brainsongames.ca. Brainsongames.ca is the website. That's where future episodes will go. Previous ones are already up there. Brains on Games is the X handle and Facebook page and the Instagram feed, so we're all over the place. And if you enjoyed this video and you want to be notified of future ones, you can head on over to YouTube and click that subscribe button. Thanks for joining me and hopefully I'll see you next time.